Okay, so let's talk briefly about the short story A and P by John Updike. So A and P is kind of like your, um, it's like a small Walmart, if you will. It's just a small little, uh, like Brookshire Brothers kind of place. Or I guess a better example would be like a old fashioned CVS, if you will. That'd be a better example. Um, so in this story, it's kind of old timey, and it has. Uh, a young boy, actually teenage boy, who's our main character. And interestingly enough, again, just like with Girl, not a whole lot actually happens in this story, and that's done intentionally. The focus of this story is on the setting, and most importantly, on the character, and the main character, the young man. And so in this plot, let's talk about the plot very briefly. Uh, it's a young man, he's working at this supermarket type place, and he's bored out of his mind. And you get evidence that he's bored because of the noise. He's basically making music with the noise, the background noise that he's hearing. You know, the, the shopping carts moving, the cash registers, uh, cha-ching, um, and things like that. And and uh, he's so bored that he's memorized the location of basically everything in the store. And so if somebody were to ask him, where do I find the peas? He wouldn't say on aisle 13. He would say, well, they're in the peas, sprouts, beans, and licorice aisle, or, you know, whatever. Um, and he's just bored out of his ever-loving mind. Well, as he's bored, he's people watching. I don't know if you're a people watcher, but I'm a people watcher. And you know, sometimes when you're bored, you just watch people for entertainment just to see what they're doing. And so he's doing that, and in walk these teenage girls. And immediately this sparks his interest because, one, he's already bored. And, two, well, he's a teenage guy. So he's very focused on these girls and uh, just kind of following them around with his eyes. You know, he's stuck at the cash register, but he's kind of following them around. And... Um, they are not dressed appropriately for this store. Given the time period that this takes place in, and they show up in their bathing suits, that's very scandalous for this time period. And so the manager basically tells them, y'all got to get out of here. And our main character kind of fancies himself a bit of a hero, doesn't he? He kind of gets this like hero complex, like if I stand up for these girls, um, they're going to shower me with affection and, and admiration, and they're going to love me for it. So he quits. He's like, you know, treat these girls right or I'm out of here. And his boss is like, no. And so he says, okay, I'm out of here. And uh, that's a problem because as he says in the op in the ending lines, uh, he, let me look at my notes real quick. I believe the last line was I felt how hard the world was going to be to me from here on in. He kind of grows up in that span of time, realizes that, oops, that was dumb, especially since he quits his job, goes outside, expects to be showered with praise by these girls, and they're nowhere to be found. They don't care. They've left. So poor kid, right? Kind of did it to himself, though. But we get a good sense of who he is and what he's about, through this story, as well as the girls and kind of their mindset and their feelings. Um, and we get a good sense of the setting of the place, but uh, not much else. So in that regard, um, there's a lot of character development. Um, there is, you know, we get a sense of the kid's uh, personality. He seems to be pretty smart. Uh, very sarcastic. Um, he seems to be a little bit sexist. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Depends on your point of view, I guess. But he's very much, you know, he calls the the people in the store sheeple, um, but he never says anything uh, overly negative about the girls because he's fixated on them. He's kind of put them on this pedestal, if you will. Um, and so think about his motivation, what's motivating him? To be this hero, right? To be this knight in shining armor to these girls. And it really doesn't work. Um, notice that the story is written in this kind of first person. 
And the reason for that is so that we get to be in the mind of the narrator and see the world through his eyes. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing in that we get to really feel how he feels about his job, his boss, these girls. But on the flip side, we also see that he's kind of misogynistic, sexist a little bit. Um, he's uh, very one-track minded, um, doesn't really think things through. And we don't see what he doesn't see because we're seeing the world through his eyes. We're also seeing the world through his biases. And so we don't know what's happening anywhere else in the store except exactly where he's looking. Um, and again, he kind of lets his biases show. He says things like he calls some of the women shoppers house slaves um, that are, you know, shopping in their curlers, their hair curlers and, and things. Um, he's got a friend there and his friend, and he kind of tease each other a little bit. Um, he mentions in the story about the plot, he says that there's a sad part of the story. Um, and we get the sense that he's kind of throwing himself a pity party because the sad part of the story is where he quits his job in an effort to be a hero and then doesn't get the recognition he feels he deserves. So again, with that kind of bias there. Um, and so, yeah, it's mostly character driven, mostly setting driven. And again, pretty simple plot. So that is the story of A and P. And again, I don't want to get into too much detail because you have some questions to answer and I don't want to just give you the answers. So, um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions.